Well, hello everybody. Hope everybody's doing good today. Had a question recently uh, from a new subscriber wondering if I had any videos on off-grid wiring. And while I have a lot of videos on running inverters off-grid, I don't have a specific one on the wiring. So in this video, we're gonna go through and give some basics on connecting your inverter up in an off-grid situation. We're gonna use the Solus S6 11.4 kilowatt inverter as the example. It'll be the same for most inverters. Nomenclature might be a little bit different, but you can use the same techniques pretty much for any inverter out there. All right, let's get to it. So like I said, this is a Solus S6 11.4 kilowatt inverter. This is a hybrid inverter, meaning it has a built-in battery charger and a solar charge controller. You don't need any extra equipment. Everything you need is right there in the unit. It can be run on grid or off grid in several different configurations. So let me bring you in here. We'll get familiarized with the connections. On the left here, you've got your PV input. That's where the solar panels hook up. There's four MPPT connections, so you can run four strings of solar panels. Then over here, now we're just gonna go through the power connections in this video. We're not gonna bother with any of the data or anything like that, just the basic power connections. Then over here, the white wires, that's your battery. Next to the battery is the backup port. On this inverter, that's where the AC power comes out of the unit when it's in an off-grid situation or when it's in backup mode when it's on grid. And then over here are your grid connections. That's where you tie into the grid if you have a grid. If you're off-grid, that's going to be your generator connections. Here's a little wiring diagram they put up for you. This camera's not very good for close-up shots. All right, let's go over to the computer and I'll show you some wiring diagrams of how all this stuff goes together. Okay, here we've got a one-line drawing for an off-grid setup. If you take a look at the left side over here, that's your PV string, that's your solar panels. After the solar panels, we like to put a surge suppressor in. And then we've got a DC circuit breaker before you go into the inverter. And another surge suppressor right before the MPPT input to the inverter. Here you've got the inverter. That's the symbol for an inverter. You've got the DC over here. So these are all DC inputs. And you've got the AC over here. And that's your AC outputs. AC grid, AC backup, circuit breaker, and then that goes to your loads. Now this circuit breaker could be a breaker panel with a whole bunch of circuit breakers in there. Okay, on this diagram we're gonna start hooking things up. This is your PV string over here. You've got positive and negative, everything's wired in series, so it's gonna be positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative. Okay, and the string has to be sized for your inverter. For example, the, the Solus S6 has a maximum open circuit voltage of 600 volts. So, this string of solar panels can't be over 600 volts. It's got a startup voltage of 80 volts. So if you put some panels together that are only 80 volts, that'll start the inverter up. The max current is 16 amps and the short circuit current is 25 amps. So let's go ahead and hook this up. We're going to go from we're going to go from the solar panels to the DC disconnect, positive, negative, and from the disconnect we would go to a surge suppressor, but I'm leaving the surge suppressors out just for simplicity's sake. So here we're going to go positive to the MPPT positive input, and then the negative going to go to the negative input. Over here we've got the battery. 
Now you want to make sure you've got a, a DC circuit breaker on the battery. If not, you're going to need an external, either a circuit breaker or a fuse, something like that. So we're going to go positive battery, positive battery, negative battery to the negative battery. And that's all hooked up. Then we've got, okay, let's go. We're going to bring these out. L1. L2. And your neutral. So this is going to go to your circuit breaker and then you're going to feed your loads with that. If you've got a generator and again this is off-grid power connections okay for off-grid only you can run a generator into the AC grid and then of course you've got your your ground here that's gonna go to the panel also there's your basic connections right there is not not too much to it let's go back over to the inverter and take a look at a couple more things all right a couple more things I will wrap up here the number one thing that I want to stress number one is safety make sure you know what you're touching make sure everything is off before you do anything Make sure you're not dealing with any live wires, all right? You want to size your wires properly. Now in this inverter, you can use up to four gauge on the grid connections and six on the backup port. Being a high voltage system, the battery, you only need six gauge wires also. That's what makes a high voltage system so awesome. It's very easy to wire up. Now if this was a 48 volt system, you'd be using some massive cables. Instead of running, say, 50 amps at full load on the, on the high voltage system, you'd be running hundreds of amps on a 48 volt system. Another thing on this inverter, the main AC grid connectors are push-in clamp type connectors. You don't need a torque wrench to work on this system. Everything they're either push-in connectors or they're clamp type. This just comes up and you push your wire in and clamp it down. On the, uh, when you're wiring up the battery, make sure you do a polarity check and label the cables. You can't see it here because underneath this ferrite core, but I've got the positive, I've got red tape on the positive and black tape on the negative. So before you go connecting any DC source that, that applies to the PV also, make sure you know what polarity is going where. Well, I think that's about it for this video. It's gone long enough. If there's any other questions, go ahead and put them in the comments and I'll see if I can cover them in the next video. As always, guys, I appreciate you and I sure would appreciate it. Subscribe and a like. And we'll catch you in the next one. Adios.